Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. After completing the occlusal analysis on the articulated cast, the incisal table is set to prevent excessive wear on these casts during the functional waxing exercise. With the incisal table properly set, the occlusal relationships are not lost when the teeth are prepared for waxing into functional occlusion. The incisal pin should be lowered so that it makes contact with the incisal table. Both condylar elements are loosened so that the upper member of the articulator is free to move. The upper member is then put into a protrusive position so that the incisors are in the edge-to-edge -edge relationship. Hold the casts in this relationship and raise the incisal table until it just makes contact with the incisal pin. Tighten the lock nut on the bottom of the articulator to secure the incisal table. Return the cast to centric occlusion and then move into right working until the cuspids are in the end-to-end -end relationship. Hold the casts in this position and raise the lateral wing until it makes a light contact with the incisal pin. Set both lateral wings of the incisal table the same way. To begin the reduction of the casts, mark the amount of reduction on the maxillary right first molar, cuspid, and central incisor. With a pencil, mark the buccal surface of the maxillary first molar approximately two millimeters from the cusp bridges. Follow the cuspal anatomy to help ensure an even reduction of the occlusal surface. Next, Draw a line on the labial surface of the cuspid, one millimeter from the incisal edge. Since the lingual surface is the functional surface on the cuspid, excessive labial reduction is not necessary. A pencil line is then drawn on the labial surface of the central incisor, one millimeter from the incisal edge. Return to the maxillary first molar and mark the lingual surface. It should be done the same as the buccal. Marking both the buccal and lingual assures good orientation during the reduction of the casts. Mark the lingual surface approximately two millimeters from the cusp ridges and remember to follow the anatomy of the tooth. Next, mark the cuspid on the lingual surface one millimeter from the free gingival margin. Finally, mark the central incisor one millimeter from the gingival tissue. When the amount of reduction has been marked on each tooth, take a moment to make sure that the teeth on the patient's right side have been marked. The reduction on the molar is done with a laboratory knife. Reduce the occlusal surface uniformly to a depth of two millimeters. Do the lingual cusps first. If you do some reduction on the lingual cusps and then some on the buccal cusps and then return to the lingual, it is possible to lose your orientation as to the amount of tooth structure being reduced. Reduce the grooves, as well as the cusp tips, an equal amount. Reducing the stone uniformly provides an area for rebuilding the occlusal surface so that it resembles the original tooth form. In addition, failure to reduce the grooves the same amount as the cusp tips will result in areas where the wax would be too thin. For example, if the waxed occlusal surface were cast into a gold restoration, the thin areas would result in holes.
It is also incorrect to simply flatten the occlusal surface, thereby over-reducing the cusps. Over-reducing could cause a pulp exposure that might cause the tooth to abscess. Finally, a small bevel is carved on the edge of the reduced occlusal surface. The bevel smooths the margin of the reduced occlusal surface, which provides a good finish line for the wax. The bevel also shapes the occlusal reduction to conform with the occlusal anatomy. It is easier to fit a cascode restoration to the sloped surface of a bevel than to a butt joint or flat surface. The rest of the molar reduction will be done off camera. The incisal edge of the cuspid can be reduced with a laboratory knife. The lingual surface is then reduced with the number 7 spatula. Reduce the lingual surface 2 millimeters. Again, be sure to reduce the tooth evenly, thereby maintaining its basic anatomical form. As the bulk of the tooth structure is reduced, try to preserve the pencil line. After the lingual surface is reduced sufficiently, carefully refine the margin at the pencil mark. The cuspid will be finished off camera. The lingual surface of the central incisor is also reduced two millimeters. The margin for the wax will be at the pencil mark. The incisal edge is reduced with the laboratory knife. Examining the completed occlusal reduction, you will notice it is done uniformly on both the lingual and buccal cusps of the first molar. After the occlusal surface is reduced, following the anatomy of the tooth, a small bevel is placed on the buccal and lingual. The bevel provides a wax finish line on the occlusal surface. The lingual surface of the cuspid is reduced uniformly, approximately 2 millimeters, and the incisal edge about 1 millimeter. Excessive reduction on the incisal edge would not be aesthetic from the labial or facial surface. The central incisor is also reduced approximately 2 millimeters and the incisal edge about 1 millimeter. The amount of clearance in centric occlusion, working and balancing, and protrusive movements can be checked with 28 gauge wax. We will only demonstrate checking in centric occlusion. The wax is folded to produce a narrow strip that is four layers thick. Place the wax on the first molars and close the articulator. The wax will conform to the occlusal anatomy, but the cusp tips should not penetrate the wax. Holes in the wax indicate that the occlusal surface has not been adequately reduced. Check the cuspid with the wax to make sure there is clearance in centric occlusion. Since there are no holes, the reduction is correct. The central incisor should be checked the same way. Remember to check in working and balancing and protrusive movements with the wax. Next, make sure there is clearance for the working cusp in the right working excursion. There should be clearance between the maxillary buccal cusps and the mandibular buccal cusps. Again, make sure there is at least two millimeters clearance. Check the cuspid and central incisor in the working movement. Again, making sure there is clearance. Next, check the protrusive movement. This is particularly important on the central incisor since the anterior teeth contact during protrusion. Insufficient reduction will not permit the addition of enough wax to restore the correct anatomical form of the tooth. Finally, observe the teeth from the lingual view to examine for clearance in centric 
and during the balancing movement. Notice the clearance on the central incisor in centric occlusion. Examine for clearance during the balancing movement. Check the maxillary right cuspid in centric occlusion and in the balancing excursion. Now, check the first molar in centric occlusion and in the balancing excursion. Make sure there is clearance between the lingual cusp of the maxillary first molar and the buccal cusp of the mandibular first molar during the balancing excursion. Insufficient clearance will result in balancing side contacts when the tooth is waxed to proper form and function. Sufficient clearance allows for enough wax to maintain the correct form without producing balancing interferences. The instruments that will be used for the functional waxing exercise include the PK Thomas No. 1, which is a wax adding instrument. This instrument has a small end for smaller drops of wax and a large end for larger drops of wax. The number 7 spatula is used for adding still larger amounts of wax. The Ward C carver and the Ward B carver are the fiber handled instruments. The carving blades on the two instruments are slightly different in size and angle. The PK Thomas No. 3 carver is used for refining the occlusal anatomy. The soft end of the plating brush is used for applying zinc stearate on the occluding surfaces of the waxed teeth. The stiff end of the brush is used for removing the wax chips that accumulate when the occlusal anatomy and axial contours are refined. The heat source can be of several types, and the flame does not have to be very hot. Bunsen burners work best in the laboratory, but alcohol lamps can be used if gas outlets are not available. The teeth will be waxed with a hard blue casting wax. Most of the wax will be added with the PK Thomas No. 1. Zinc stearate is used to check for contact or lack of contact. Spend some time familiarizing yourself with the wax. Heat the wax adding instrument along the shank. When the instrument is hot, pick up some wax. If the wax is not on the tip of the instrument, place the shank in the flame and the wax will flow to the end of the instrument. With a small bead of wax on the tip of the instrument, it is easy to form a small pyramid of wax that can be used to develop the cusp of a tooth. The right amount of heat is important. If the wax is not hot enough, then it will not flow from the instrument to the tooth. If you overheat the wax, it will catch fire and burn. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.